Whether you're trying to restore a current relationship or taking on a new one, establishing boundaries is essential to a healthy and balanced lifestyle. So how do you set boundaries when it comes to family? Well, Dr. John Townsend, author of best-selling book, Boundaries, and its new follow-up, book Beyond Boundaries, has some great tips on how to do that. So good to meet you. You too. This is a, a very important subject for a lot of people who have crazy family members <laughs> that they need to draw boundaries with. Yes, it is. And I, I love the fact that you are supporting boundaries. Mm -hmm. What are some of the boundaries? Well, boundaries is a strange word. It sounds like a moat, like, you know, I don't want a relationship with you. And, and you can have a boundary just by saying, um, I can't meet with you when you want me to. That doesn't work for me. Uh, mm -hmm. I can't lend you the money. I can't lend, my, lend you my lawnmower. I can't babysit your kids. So it's basically saying no in a nice way. Mm -hmm. There are some people that can't take that, and you got to go firmer. But the best, fam the best boundary for a family member is, that, is say, that doesn't work for me right now, and, and you kind of move on. So you're nice about it, but you've got to be firm. Saying no is hard for a lot of people. It is very hard. How do you, how do you find the strength to say no in a loving and non-confrontational way? The best way in the world is to practice with people that support you. I mean, I've had people go to Starbucks with their friends and say, I gotta say no to my mother-in-law. She's gonna freak out. She's gonna run out of the room and cry victim because I can't babysit her kids or whatever. And you practice saying, I'd like to, I don't have the time, this isn't a good time for me. And your friend goes, hey, that was great. Mm -hmm. And the practice helps you to tolerate the really sort of crazy toxic person. But would you say that setting boundaries kind of helps um, you, some people, and, and you used a mother-in-law reference, not feel taken advantage of maybe, or Absolutely. even by maybe a sister that's always like, hey, will you watch my kids while I go, da 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 yeah. does, it allow, does it allow a person to feel a little bit more self-worth if they yeah. feel like they're not taken advantage because they have set that yeah, boundary? Yeah, we only have so much energy in life and, and so much time in life. And when you're always saying yes because you feel bad, you're going to end up feeling depleted drained. and drained and irritated and you can't focus. So banners are a way to, to have good energy. And here's the funny thing. The healthy people in your life will like it. They'll go, that was nice. We could be honest with each other. And they'll really be drawn to, to you. We respect you. So it's a way to kind of diagnose the health of your family and friends. Now, I know when I turned 30, uh, me and my mom, well, our, our relationship shifted from almost like that parent, yeah. you know, the yes, you can, no, you can't, Courtney, to almost more of a friendship. How, would you say maybe the mother-daughter boundary is m one of the most difficult? Or what's the most difficult within the family dynamic? I think that's one of the most difficult because, in fact, more than a, a son, son mother, because a son is moving from someone unlike him to someone like him who's his father, mm -hmm. right? A little girl is going from someone very, it's like the earth and the sun are very similar and they got to move away from each other. There's a lot more gravity. It's very difficult for a mom and a, and a daughter to do that. If you've got a good mom, she says, I love it that you disagree and you want to dress differently and we're going to have these talks and she likes it. A mom that has what we call dependency issues, she'll try to control that. It's, it's difficult. And my mom's what? okay, I think, with me and pulling away because <laughs> more and more every day she's like, oh, you are just like me, and you'll learn that. <laughs> what about the closest people to you, like a spouse, someone you share your life with? It's hmm. sometimes hard to set those boundaries because they're always right there in your face. You can't, right. like, remove yourself from it. Right. And, and you want to love somebody, and you want to give to them and, and all that, but you start realizing, I'm kind of doing 90% of the work in the relationship, even though I love you. I always recommend um, what I call a state of the union talk in the marriage. Can we talk about us, how we're doing? Now, we've been married 17 years, let's say, and I've noticed that sometimes I don't tell you no when I should or I don't speak when I should, and I think that's not fair to either one of us. A lot of times the spouse will say, me too, let's talk about it. And then we've got all this love, but we're going to put truth in with the love, and all of a sudden things get better. So the state of the unit kind of starts the conversation. Can we quickly touch on parents? Uh, relationships with parents or in-laws. This always comes up, especially around the holidays. You know, how do we handle it? Mm -hmm. We're facing another holiday or a birthday or in a special mm -hmm. occasion, and you have somebody toxic in your life. What, what would you suggest quickly? Well, I don't suggest telling Aunt Sally she can't come because you're going to pay for that for 20 years with <laughs> mean letters and emails. What I always say is you're nice to her, and you give her a couple of chances to be kind and nice. If she takes over, if she takes all the attention, if she starts attacking or condemning, you try to change the subject a couple of times. So how's the weather or how's, have you been traveling? And after a while, you have to quarantine her. And quarantine means you assign somebody in the family to be with her for about five minutes while everybody else has a good time over here. <laughs> that's what we did in my family. My kids, would, we had a toxic person, I'm not going to name names. Well, she's dead now. But my, my wife would take her for five That'll minutes. That'll show her. And then, and then my kids would take her, and then I would take her, and everybody else is having a good time over here. We, we sort of quarantined the toxicity to have a great time. That's a good idea. Yeah, I like your ideas. Very good. Thank you so much. Sure. All right, don't go anywhere because we're talking about drawing boundaries and our coming up next when it comes to worrying 
and working, I'm sorry, working with others. And that could be at the office or even volunteering for maybe your child's PTA. It's, it's, it's rampant. It's all over. And we've got to take care of it. There are many ways that this can go wrong, but Dr. Townsend has tips how to help you get through it. And we'll be right back.